Hi, so welcome back. This is the fourth video in my first project with Lattice FPGA series. This video is going to be on simulation in the IceCube 2 software from Lattice. First, I wanted to go over a visual example of the two Verilog files that we made last time. So one was the test bench file and the other was the actual Verilog that we will use for synthesis and to generate a bit stream. So I'm going to start with the synthesizable Verilog. That's the one that we're going to use on our FPGA. And we started with this black box, didn't have anything inside it, didn't know what was inside it, and this was our module. We gave it a name and we gave it two inputs, A and B. We also gave it one output, Y. Then we specified the behavior of this module, this internal behavior as an AND gate. So the output Y will be the will be A anded with B. Um, that's the operation that's going to go on here. That was everything we did in the synthesizable Verilog file. Now we also made a test bench, and the test bench was for simulation. And what we did was we gave the input a a bunch of values or we give it kind of a signal aa to drive it we did the same with input b we gave it a bunch of signals bb and then we created a wire from the output of the module called yy so we could view what the output waveform looks like according to the behavior inside of the module so now that we got that out of the way, you can open up IceCube 2, double click on new project and write project name. I'm going to call it and gate. I'm going to save it to the YouTube file that I made, which was in LSCC and I clicked IceCube 2. And I went down to YouTube. OK, that's going to work. And then now we get to the device. And the device family is the ICE40. That's the family of FPGA that's on the ICE stick. The device is the HX1K. And the device package is TQ144. And you can get this from the data sheet on Lattice's website. Junction temperature can remain the same. Core voltage is 1.2 volts if it's not set there. IO bank voltage are all 3.3 volt logic level. So set all those to 3.3 timing analysis based on worst. Keep that the same. And then start from synthesis. Keep that the same. And click next. Just click finish for now. We're not going to add these yet. Okay. So. Here's our project. Now, I said this before and I said it again. IceCube 2 isn't like Vivado where you can just type your Verilog and go at it. You need to import the files. This step isn't necessary, I believe, before simulation. However, I like to do it to make sure the Verilog's okay. So over here on this left-hand side, I'm gonna right-click on Design Files. And I'm going to click Add Files. And it already has the look in YouTube. It already has that folder popped up. If it doesn't, you can click My Computer, Desktop, Home, wherever you have your file made. And I have two .v files of the test bench and the AND gate. So I'm going to you can I'm going to add this AND gate file. So you can either double click on it, or you can click on it once and then click this arrow over here and then click OK. And just to make sure the Verilog's OK, I'm going to double click on this run simple, simple, simplify pro synthesis and see if we get any errors. And if we don't, should be good to go. So wait one sec because I got a slow computer. Come on, buddy.
almost there, <laughs> I promise. Yeah, so let's see. It says synthesis succeeded. Right down here, synthesis runtime, 25 seconds. Perfect. Okay, then you can go up here, right here to this blue A with an HDL, and that stands for active HDL. And click that. Create another project name. I'm going to call this and gate underscore simulation. Save it to the YouTube file, LCC, Ice Cube 2. Yeah, save it to this and gate project. Okay, great. And click next. Register transfer level, that's what RTL stands for. Yes, we want that. And we need the test bench file to simulate. So I'm going to go over to this green add, click add, and then find the test bench file, LSCC, Ice Cube 2, YouTube, and gate test bench, open, and make sure that the test bench file is below the actual Verilog file. Okay, that's always what needs to happen. And then click next. And those are the files we want. We want the end gate and the end gate testament. And finish. And it should open up active HDL for us. One note is that if you're running active HDL outside of this Lattice Ice Cube 2, it doesn't have the write libraries in it. And I found this out because I looked at the Ice Cube 2 user guide. So this, I'll link this user guide in the description. This is page 179. And it says when you invoke the Aldec simulator, which is the active HDL by Aldec, through the simulation wizard, the appropriate compiled libraries are automatically included for the simulation. That's good, that's what we did. If you are running the simulator outside of the simulation wizard, the pre-compiled libraries must be referenced in the simulator. I don't even know what that is because I haven't messed around with that. So we're not going to mess around with it. Just run it from the Ice Cube 2. So this is the active HDL all uh, ready to go. And first what we're going to do is go up here to design and compile all. It's going to compile all of the um, stuff. So you can see we're getting some messages down here. And the source compiled without the DGB switch line breakpoints and insertion debug will not be available. I'm not going to worry about that right now. Then you can go over here to this little plus sign. Click it and it'll expand. Then you go to the test bench. Right click. And then we're going to want to set it as top level. Okay. Even though it has this little TOP right here, that doesn't mean it's top level yet. So we're going to set it as top level, and it becomes bolded right there. Then go up here to Simulation, Initialize Simulation. Okay, Create Instances Complete. And Simulation has been initialized. Okay, so we're here. So we've got Simulation. Great. Now where's the waveform? Go over to the Hierarchy right here. Right-click on Test Bench and click add to waveform the waveform is going to pop up and then down here in the console so i went down here to the console i'm going to type something i'm going to type run we're going to go for oh let's say 1000 picoseconds and hit enter Simulate fission, there are no more vectors to simulate. Okay, so we got some waveforms. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. And let's see if this is the behavior we expect. This is AA, BB, and YY. Those were the parameters in our test bench. AA and VV were the signals, and YY was the wire coming out of the Verilog module. So to start, they're all zero. A is zero. B is zero, and remember the module that's the behavior of our Verilog file is an AND gate. So 
unless both are high, the output Y is always going to be low, and Y is linked to wire YY, so YY will be low. So we have AA low, BB low, YY is low. Great. Now, next one, we have AA is high, BB is low, YY is still low. At two picoseconds, we have AA is low, BB is high, and YY is still low. And not until after three picoseconds, I'm going to go over here so you can see what's happening. You see AA is high and BB is high, therefore YY is high. And then the simulation is finished. So great, we are good to go. You can save this file if you want to. You can not use any of it. You can close it. I just wanted to show you how to simulate something in ActiveHDL within the IceCube 2 software. Okay, great. Thanks for watching.